Now, when using contrast paints, there's kind of, there's two different parts of the brush that are important. And to kind of demonstrate my point, I'm going to use this Army Painter Regiment brush as an example. So, contrast paint, as we all know, works in two different layers. So you've got the the shaded area and the kind of the highlight and all that kind of stuff. And the heavier pigment runs into the recesses and the lighter pigment stays stays out of the recesses. So it stands to reason that the logic is the same for the brush. Now, if you take the brush as a model, you've got the tip of the brush and you've got the base of the brush. Now, when you dip your paint with the brush, we're gonna just demonstrate this live. You take the paint like this, some absorption happens in the center of the bristle. So when you, I'll just demonstrate on my finger. So when you sort of paint with the, the tip of your brush like this, you get a nice even coat like that. Whereas if you kind of like you would normally with a, with a base brush, or oh, with a base paint, sorry, if you kind of just do this, you get, sometimes you get an inconsistency. So you get a much stronger color, but you don't get this kind of even type of contrast, you see? So if I'm applying this logic to painting a vehicle, if I kind of start with the tip like so, to give it that nice even, and then I do that, I get this darker patch here. So I'm just going along like this, and then I do that. So you kind of get these, get what I'm kind of driving at. So when you're painting the vehicle, it's important to kind of know what you're doing. Rather than kind of just doing this kind of thing and you get this kind of inconsistent darkness here and lighter here, if you just use the tip of the brush and just kind of draw like this, using just the tip, you get the kind of result you're looking for, which is a stronger color that does the job. I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this. So, bearing all of that in mind, if we take a much larger brush, like say, a large base brush, we can kind of do more of this sort of thing than we can with a brush that is, you know, tipped. So this one is a, is a flat, is a, is a flat brush. So what we could do is, for example, and I'll use this Redemptor Dreadnought as the example, is we can pick an area, like on his leg, and we take this panel here, for example, and we can just take some of the contrast paint, the Blood Angels Red, on our large, large base brush. Then we just pick the area, and because we know to use the tip, we kind of just angle our brush in such a way that we're going to catch the whole panel. So we just kind of make contact with the model and just put it down, like so, in just one, in one movement. And that way we kind of don't get that kind of those brush strokes. If we keep a smaller brush on hand, we can just use it to just smooth out any areas where it gets a little bit too dark, just using the tip to just pull that contrast around the model around the armor panel, I should say. So we get this just this nice, smooth, one, one coat look. We'll dry off our spare brush. So we'll just repeat the exercise again. We'll do it on the knee pad and we'll just grab 
a little bit like this. Then we'll pick the knee pad and we'll angle our brush in such a way that we know we're going to catch most of the panel. I'm just going to make contact with the model and put it down in one stroke like that. Now what you can see is I've kind of I've missed this edge here and I've got this large section of contrast that is now looking like a splodge. So I'm going to wash off my large brace brush and I'm going to go back to my smaller brush and I'm just going to start pulling that contrast around just gently, trying not to make it look too streaky. And because it's still wet, the contrast isn't drying and kind of leaving those marks just yet. As you can see, I've now got a nice, smooth armor panel. Now, because the edge of the panel is a lot smaller, I can just use my smaller brush that I'm using to just make contact with the model and pull the contrast down. Once again, like that. Similarly, one more time on the other side. Giving me these nice, smooth colors. On these armor panels. The other thing to bear in mind is that contrast is affected by gravity. So actually if you put too much on and you're holding the model like I am now and then you just stand him up like that, the contrast will just run down to the bottom and it will create that pooling effect at the bottom of the of the model. So although it's a slow process, it is quite effective because as it starts to dry it gives us that nice rich color that we're always after when we're using the contrast paints so it's a quick video I know but I hope that helps um, as you can see this top panel is almost almost dry and it's got this nice smooth finish on it it looks nice and consistent a nice consistent clean red. Um, so I'm going to go around and do every single one of the panels like this but I hope this kind of this technique helps and feel free to continue to give it a try yourself and let me know how it works for you.